Now after Troy uh, put in his air conditioner and all that, and he had a lot of people arguing the toss about you know the the thing and all that, and he almost had a gutful for the sounds of it, and he had to come out and and say a few things. One of the things he said, I just about couldn't believe it when I heard it. Some of his viewers there believed entirely that you can't go off the grid cheap, that you need to put in $15,000 or more worth of solar panels to be able to live off the grid. Um, now, I think a few of these people have been watching a couple of these shows on TV, and they've been seeing these houses that are drowning solar panels. Now, in the United States, 10-20% of these may be owned by preppers or people of that sort of a nature. Um, over in Australia, I've literally come across about three preppers. And preppers are just absolutely unheard of here. So 97% of houses, like you see on TV, drown in solar panels. Um, you know, they aren't owned by anyone except very, very, very wealthy greenies. These houses you see on TV, they're not built to be off-grid. They're built to be green. They are drowned in solar panels. They do cost half a million dollars plus with, you know, between the house and all the systems. They, they cost massive dollars. But it's just a family who's worth millions of dollars trying to live green. They're not trying to live off-grid. They're trying to live green. Um, I don't know what the feeling is over in the States about wind turbines, but over here there's this myth going around by people who obviously haven't had much to do with birds because I've had birds come within inches of my face to get mosquitoes. I've had birds flying at full speed almost hit me here and then just, Phew! you know, swerve out the way. I've literally felt my hair sucking up, That's you know, but they never hit you. Um, birds are very manoeuvrable, but over here there's a lot of greenies who were pro-wind and now shit can wind turbines because they say, oh, they kill the birds. Uh, the, the blades spin, spin around and, and the, they hit the birds and kill the birds. None of them have actually seen it happen. None of them have got video footage of it happening, but they all say it does happen, so they don't really touch wind turbines. There's so many people that believe that and are sort of distance themselves from anything wind-related, and they're crazy on solar. And the houses over here... Um, by these multi-millionaires that are designed to be green, um, you know, they're sort of all solar. And then there's also the, the myths about the noise they make and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, and, and some of them do make noise and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, these houses that you're seeing, drowned in solar panels, worth a half a million dollars between the house and the system on it, um, you know, this is rich greenies. They didn't build it to be off-grid, they built it to be green. So that's one thing that I, I think I should have been pointed out, uh, so I've pointed it out. Um, now, the way I see off-grid living, um, I can tell you for a fact it is cheap to set up off-grid. How would I know? i done it firsthand. So, in regards to how do I see off-grid living. Well, in this area here, the power only come on in 1953 or 1956. There are quite a lot of houses that still don't have electricity on in this area, um, but the town that I can see over yonder, that's where my father grew up. It was 1953 or 1956 before the power come on. Um, so basically until the mid-50s they didn't have the grid. All they had was party line telephone systems where the neighbours could listen into your conversation with someone else because there's about eight phones hooked on the one line. Um, that was the only bit of the grid they had. Um, and then the electricity come. And he said when the electricity come, it was like magic. It was like it was just like another otherworldly technology, like all these Christmases had come at once. Um, but you got to realise that people existed before the grid. Around here, the grid only went on in the mid-50s. And basically the way I see off-grid living is living as they did around here before the power come on. 
and then as you can afford it, as you have the money for it, you step forward in technology, you go and buy yourself a propane stove and an LED lantern as I had in the early days and then when you got the money you get yourself a decent solar system so you can turn the lights on and do all that stuff that everybody else does and then as the money progresses a bit more you get yourself a propane fridge or a solar powered fridge on its own system as I've got and then as the money progresses you get and as you know a propane freezer or whatever as things go on you basically start living like they did around here before the power come on in the mid 50s with the old technologies, with the wood heaters, with the, and aspects of new technologies that are cheap, such as an LED lantern, such as a propane stove, and then as the money comes, you step ahead and use appropriate newer technologies. You know, propane hot water systems, solar systems. Um, and there's another thing I'd like to throw in. I believe that between Mother Nature or God, whatever you want to call it, um, a bloke my uncle met prayed to Elvis, so he'd be saying Elvis, um, between Mother Nature or God or whoever provided the world, the natural world around us, and the uh, technology available, some of which isn't in the mainstream, such as gasified generators, such as wood gas stoves, but other simple things like solar systems, LED lighting, propane stoves, you know, propane fridges, propane freezers, 12 volt fridges, um, you know, there's, there's uh, Fresnel lens solar cookers, there's other solar cookers that are, are more enclosed, there's, uh, you know, solar troughs for um, hot water, um, some of those make steam up to 327 degrees Celsius, I'm not joking. Um, there's, you know, Gene Payne's uh, composting hot water. Uh, there's solar hot water um, in, in black pipes laying outside. You know, there's all this technology and then knowledge of how to put these systems together, how to get it all to run. So between Mother Nature slash God, um, technologies available and knowledge of how to use and put those technologies in, almost everything's provided. You know, you've got foraging, you've got, um, you know, all this stuff to be able to grow things and live a reasonable life, even with electricity, you know, and, and sort of almost be completely independent from the outside world. Um, so yeah, that's sort of, you're 95% dependent, you know, you don't have a surgeon here. But, you know, you've got other things, herbal medicine, Chinese medicine, almost everything's provided. You know, and, and you can live as they did in the old times and then as the money comes you add all the extra technologies to be more and more and more, um, have a higher quality of living and be more and more self-sufficient if that's your goal. Um, able to exist independent of the system if that's your goal um, as you can afford these things. Um, so yeah, that's my view on off-grid living um, and you know the confusion that some people have between rich people trying to be green and off-grid living as I view it um, and as I've done it and advanced from when I first come here to how I am now.